We spent the morning catching up with Marinda Carfre on her season plans before heading off for a one hour swim session followed by a little basketball. Marinda's 2012 season has officially started. Since she holds the Ironman Marathon course record, Carfrey is considered the best runner in long distance triathlon. But to stay at the top and the win again at the Ironman World Championship in Kona, Hawaii, she knows she can't have a weak link. Carfrey knows that the other pro women will be faster than ever before. And everyone will be upping the ante to be at their very best in Kona. You know, the world around us, you can't, you know, have any impact on what other women are doing and how fast they're going to go. But, you know, I think the more you focus on yourself and the more you forget about everybody else, then the better you are able to improve every year and deal with what comes on race day. And I think I've gotten to a point, I've raced three Konas now, that I'm starting to think, okay, well, you know, I need to look closer to my nutrition. Um, certainly bike fit is something that we've really worked on. Um, I think when you look at my race in Kona, there's not much more time you could get out of my run. There's probably not much more time you could get out of my swim. But there's a lot of time that, can, that I can hopefully make up on the bike. So, you know, now I have a little team helping me figure out my best possible position, um, you know, how we're gonna mount hydration on my bike, what tires to run, what wheels to run. Now, you know, I'm at the point, I'm at the pointy end of the field and, and I'm looking for one percenters. Probably Kona's probably the easiest race not to lose focus because it is a race that you think about non-stop in training. It's, you know, you visualize those hard points, you visualize the good, the good points um, all the time in training. So, you know, inevitably you're gonna have dark periods. There's gonna be voices in the back of your head screaming to stop, screaming that it's too hard, screaming that you can't go any further. Uh, but I mean, I've, I've never given up anything. Um, and I think, you know, the pain of giving in or you know, taking your foot off the gas and knowing that you gave in is far worse than what you have to go through in any race at, at any point in time. So, I mean, I just know that I would prefer to just put it all out there and then at the end of the day, I can, I can sleep well at night knowing that I did everything that I, I could do. Monica, yes. tell us a little bit about what our swimmers are doing today. Okay, so since it's December, it's early season, so I try not to make it too hard, too easy, so something aerobic, but also change of speed, change of stroke. So today we're doing IM slash freestyle. So we basically start at an, um, three 100 IMs where you go the same pace throughout, little easy interval, and then we'll go three 200s free where the pace changes going easy, moderate, a little quicker, not fast, but quicker. And then again, more I am, more freestyle, back and forth. Not going anaerobic, but where you're, you know, have a little, you know, your heart rate's up a bit. Sure. But then coming back down where you can recover possibly on the IMs, but still working different muscles when you're doing fly back and breast. What's interesting is in the Ironman and the other way she's doing, it's all freestyle. Mm -hmm. Here they're doing some butterfly, backstroke, uh, breaststroke. Is that to just build different muscles? Is it just to give variety just so you don't variety, get... Just variety, early season. You know, I mean, they've, they've probably taken a good break after, um, you know, they're racing and vacationing. So, you know, I just try to mix it up, make it fun, not so boring. I mean, because it's so repetitive during the season that you want to make, make it more, you know, splitting, split it up with different strokes, different times, just more fun. Perfect, thanks so much. Yeah. After a quick break to refuel with chocolate milk on the pool deck, Marinda heads back to her roots. A shoot around in the Flatirons gym with Tim O'Donnell. Yeah, I can't do any of that fancy stuff. <laughs> followed my older brothers into basketball when I was about seven. And I played under 10s, you yeah. know, they have that mini ball half court situation. Under 12, I represented my city, I guess. And then sort of, I started to learn about the Olympics and the whole world of, oh, you can actually be an athlete for a living. That's when the sort of Olympic dream 
was awoken and it sure. was Olympic dream for basketball. Right. And you know, I was, I didn't have much prospect of being a tall person. <laughs> My mum and dad aren't, aren't the tallest people. Um, but I certainly hope to be tall than 5'3", but um, it didn't happen. Right before I started university, I started to do some off-season training. So strength training, uh, running training to help basketball. Sure. And the guy I started training with happened to also coach triathletes. At the end of that year, um, that coach just said to me, you know, you should give triathlon a go. Like, I think you're, you look great running. I mean, you're a natural, you should, you should give it a try. Got a bike, I think maybe six months later. Um, my basketball coach who had put hours of training into me, he was heartbroken that I was moving away from basketball, but he was the guy who put up money for my first bike. He said, you know, if this is what you want to do, then I believe in you. But yeah, so that was the start. She's number 23 from Australia, starting guard, averaging 18.4 points per game, Berinda Carfrey. Oh, oh you yeah. hit the shot. <laughs> the first workout of the day is in the books. Next up is lunch and recovery as she prepares for a late afternoon run. <laughs> 